morning and welcome to Santa Fe College's Career Coffee Shop. I am Esmeralda Alvarez, Admissions Specialist, and with me is James Schindler, Coordinator for the Career and Placement Office, Job Placement Office. I apologize. We are excited to have you joining us today. This is our eighth show, and I think it's crazy just how time is flying by, but there has been a lot of information shared on this show. James, how are you doing today? Is I am doing great. We have some amazing guests on the show today that are going to present some great opportunities for our viewers. So stick around to hear more. While you're at it, we want to find out what your favorite coffee creamer is this morning. So please leave us a comment letting us know. Yes, and while you're at it, go ahead and share this show with your friends or colleagues. You can find all of our previous shows on the YouTube under Career Coffee Shop. So please check it out and share them as well. So let's get right to it. And speaking of colleagues, our guests today include Santa Fe's Institute of Public Safety, also Santa Fe's Risk Management and Insurance Program, and a highly anticipated visit from Student Life. Additionally, since much of what we do is about employment, we hear from Santa Fe College are going to hear from our HR department about jobs right here on campus. And then we're going to hear from Collier Company about some of the hiring needs here in the Gainesville area. Now, it wouldn't be called Career Coffee Shop without a fun fact regarding coffee. James, I have a question for you. How many years do you think it takes for a coffee tree to produce coffee beans? Is why do you always have to stump me on in front of my whole audience? I'm going to say three years to get that coffee bean. You're really close. It takes five years for a coffee tree to produce coffee beans. And then after that, it can produce coffee beans for a total of 25 years. Isn't that crazy? Um, but that makes me appreciate every little coffee bean a little bit more than usual. Wow. You know what is? I've got some olive trees at my house that they told me would be five to seven years. So much like an olive tree with coffee, you better have some patience waiting on that bean. On the subject of coffee, this morning I have to share a very special coffee that my wife made just for the show today. It's what she calls a Vietnamese iced coffee, which is made with a very, very strong cold brew mixed with heavy cream and just the right amount of sugar. Tell you what, it's going down way too smooth this morning. Send me a message if you'd like to like the recipe. Speaking of special things is, have you ever been to the Institute of Public Safety? Yes, I have. And I can tell you that is a pretty cool place to go to. You are exactly right. The Institute of Public Safety houses numerous programs, including paramedics, correctional offers, and so much more. But don't take my word for it. Please welcome our first guest, Sally Anderson from Santa Fe College's Institute of Public Safety. Welcome, Sally. The floor is yours. I think you're muted, Sally. Good morning, James. Thank Good. you for having me. How are you? Very well, very well, and welcome. We can't wait to hear from you. Thank you, precious mine. So Sally, what do you have for us this morning? Can you tell us about the Institute of Public Safety? Sure. Hello, everyone. My name is Sally Anderson. I'm from Institute of Public Safety. We offer two associate's degree, emergency medical services and criminal justice program. They're both two-year associates of science program. Also, we, all, we have four vocational certificate program. They are Police Academy, Correction Officer Academy, emergency medical technician program and paramedic programs. Sally, tell us a little bit about how students find out more about your programs and then those that are interested, how do they enroll in your programs? So there's a different way that you can enroll. You can simply come and visit us. You can call us. You can also check out a Santa Fe website under Institute of Public Safety. Normally, I would make an appointment and meet with the student. I would show them how the, we have a brand new Institute of Public Safety building open up a couple of years ago. I'll give them a tour, you know, so they can see what they're going through. And then I explain how the selection process is. Of course, they are all limited access programs. So you have to go through the selection process in order for you to be a Florida certified officer. 
Um, and then I have a quick question for you. Um, what changes have been put into place since COVID-19? So we've been back for about a month. And of course, there are some uh, programs like EMT and paramedic that require a hands-on program. We are carefully, uh, what we did was we expand the classroom to twice as big and limit the number of students and we separate it you know, and have so that they have a, you know, good social distancing. And because we have expanded a building to double the size, you know, two years ago, we have a plenty space. Students are very careful. Staffs are very careful. We do sanitize all the time. We open the windows and all that. We are very, very careful. Fantastic. Sally, I know you work with a lot of people from a lot of different areas. I know you train the local force. Um, do you work with local employers or even non-local employers nationwide after they graduate? How do you help students find, find their, their place? Mm -hmm. So we have a partner agency on the law enforcement side. There are a lot of county sheriff's department, Gainesville police department, University of Florida and Santa Fe PD, of course. And also for EMS side, we have partnership with the Alachua County and GFR, Gainesville Fire and Rescue. We have a close contact relationship with them. They have an office here in IPS and they'll come and recruit. They also have a sponsorship. I can give them information. And we also have uh, each academy, we also have like a job fair at the IPS so that by the time when the student graduate, hopefully most of them have a job already with the local agency. Job fairs right up my alley. Last question, Sally, and this is more because I've been there and I've seen it. Tell us about the Kirkpatrick Center, especially that back area that you've got for real world, real world training. So we have, like I said, we have opened a brand new building. It's a state of the art. There's only four academy like this in the United States, other than FBI and one in Michigan and one in DC. We have all hands-on program. You all have to come and check it out. I offer the tour, you know, of course with the social distancing, you know, we have to do it by appointment, but we have an actual townhouse there. We have a bar, restaurant and bar built there. And so that student can come and see what it's really like to be you know, as working once you work. If I recall, you've even got what looks to be apartments and storefronts, yes. sidewalks, we have a street room lights. Apartment with the bed and living room and all that. And we also have, not to mention, we have advanced technology system where when we do the training, instructors are in a computer room where they can see how student moves, you know, throughout the building, and we can make. Uh, we have a fire alarm system. We have a smoke system. Uh, we can make an entire building smells like marijuana. <laughs> wow! We have a really great hands-on training. So we do have a question that came in from the audience, and they asked, "Are there any program a student right out of high school can do at the IPS center?" Yes, so as for law enforcement, you have to be 19 before you can, you know, enroll. You can enroll technically age 18 as soon as you graduate high school because the law enforcement academy is six months long, as long as you become 19 and you can graduate. Of course, once you start being a police officer and you get on the street, there are some age limitations and, you know, age requirement for agency side. But EMT program, we have several uh, dual high school enrollment in the EMT program. You don't have to be 18 to join the EMT program. And it's a wonderful program. Okay. Um, well, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, you know, you mentioned about different several programs that you do offer. Um, so if you are looking for something that takes from a couple of months to a few years, please reach out to Sally Anderson. Her contact information is in the description box. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, Sally. Are you someone who's always looking for the best way to protect yourself and your assets from the unknown? Maybe a career in risk management and insurance would be a good fit for you. We have Professor Greg Bradley with us today to talk about the insurance industry. Professor Bradley, welcome. The floor is yours. Good morning. Good morning. I'm going to try to, I'm going to, try to share a screen here. All right, do we have a black screen? Okay, thanks Jim uh, for inviting me this morning. I wanted to uh, just briefly take a little bit of time and uh, talk about three things. One is the AS degree at Santa Fe in risk management and insurance. The second is to talk about why it's a great time to be in risk management and in the insurance area because of some Converging of some uh, forces that are happening in the market. And then the lastly, just talk about some of the career opportunities and where people might fit coming out of this program. So first and foremost, my name is Greg Bradley. I am uh, one of the professors of insurance within the risk management program. Uh, I came out of corporate America as a former uh, exec, but I am now the owner of uh, G. Bradley Insurance Agency here in Gainesville. So in the program, we take three courses uh, that are focused on insurance. There's the principles of liability and property, there's personal insurance, and then there's commercial insurance. So uh, what I thought I would do today is just talk about uh, the, the program a little bit and why it's a great time. So just speaking of a great time, if you just think about what's happening in our world right now as we speak, we've got hurricanes, we have fires out in California, we've got civil unrest with protests, uh, and we've got this thing called the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and I realize that people may not really think about risk management every day, but every day we walk out of the house, whether you're an individual or whether you're a business, you're faced with the opportunity of potential loss. And so right now, and these things don't go away, and they're always getting more complex uh, in, in, in the nature in which we handle these things. So when you think about all the, the disruption that is going on in the world, and you add that with what we also have in converging tech, technologies, where telematics, uh, things you put, devices that you put uh, in your car now, devices that you put on equipment, that, that tell you how you're actually using that. And the world is moving more towards um, how do we uh, properly ensure, how do we uh, properly manage risk based on how things are actually being used? So as smart devices, uh, smart appliances in your home, predictive analytics, as those things continue to converge, you add that in with what's going on with natural disasters and then just the uh, general loss exposures that we have every day that makes it a great time to be in risk management and insurance. So then the obvious question would be, well, okay, when, and where, where are those opportunities? Um, and I just wanted to call out a few of them. I don't have a slide on it, but I wanted to talk through it. So you can come out of this program and uh, continue to a four-year degree. You can come out of this program and go into industry. And some of those opportunities are in large corporations, they actually have dedicated risk management functions. Uh, here locally in Alachua County and Bradford County, we, we may not have some of those really big companies where they have uh, dedicated risk managers or are looking at an enterprise risk management, but we absolutely have the next set, which is insurance companies. And within an insurance company, there are several functions. There's marketing, how do you, go out and educate agents and those that will be selling your products on the products and services that you offer. Um, you've got underwriting, the people that actually identify, you know, what is our risk profile? How are we going to price our products? Uh, you've got actuarial sciences that you can go into and do more pre predictive analytics and looking at how losses actually come in and, and analyzing them. You've got claims. Uh, when something actually happens, how is that insurance company going to make good on their claims? And then you've got the finance organizations that you, those are just within the insurance carriers themselves. The next area is agents and brokers. And this is where I sit. I'm an agent. 
Um, but in, in an agency world, you are actually interacting with the end customer. So whether it be a consumer in personal lines or whether it be a business in commercial lines, you are responsible for generally the sales and the frontline service for those customers. Uh, and then lastly, you've got independent uh, adjusters and inspectors and appraisers that are a part of it. So all of those are career opportunities that may not necessarily be where you go and in, in an entry level, but it, it definitely provides you the opportunity to progress and, and, and have an exciting career in risk management. So, so James, I wanted to thank you for the opportunity and happy to take any questions. Yes, actually, we do have a question for you. And that is, what do you think is the best type of personality suited for working in the insurance industry? Um, I don't think that there's any one answer. I think it depends on uh, the function that you're going in, right? So if you're in sales, uh, you may not need necessarily insurance experience, but you, you got to be fearless and you got to be willing to go out and meet new people and network and uh, be able to understand and listen to what a customer's situation is and match that up with the products and services that are available to them. Um, so you need good listening skills. You need to be fearless when it comes to picking up the phone. But that's on the sales side. But if you're an actuarial person, you may have a quiet personality and never want to interface with the public and sit at your computer and be very analytical and drive data models and build data models and predictive analytic models. Um, so it all depends on who you are and what your personality is and which part of the risk management value chain you think you can fit into. Greg, I love that you used the word fearless. More than once, I can just picture that insurance agent suiting up in that suit of armor and heading out to find that new business because it can be brutal. I do have a question. You mentioned COVID a couple of times and just the atmosphere or the environment that we're in right now. How is the insurance industry holding up with COVID here in the Gainesville area? Um, so I think I, I got to answer the question uh, a little bit more broadly than, than Gainesville, because what is what is happening is I will give you an example like restaurants. Uh, you know, restaurants lost a lot of income based on COVID because they were forced to shut down. Uh, but the way the policies read, if you have a policy that replaces business income, it says it needs to be a direct physical loss. Um, well, COVID a virus is not necessarily a direct physical loss, at least the way it's interpreted by the insurance companies. So what's happening now is uh, lawyers are getting involved and people are suing the insurance companies uh, about the language and whether or not uh, this should be a covered loss or not a covered loss. And I think eventually it's going to end up probably in the Supreme Court um, because the insurance companies are arguing if we have to cover a pandemic, then we're not going to be able to sustain those losses. And we didn't charge a premium to cover a pandemic. The insured is saying, yeah, but I didn't bring this upon myself and I lost my income. That should be covered under my policy. So all those things are kind of making their way through the court systems. And I think eventually you're going to make their way to the uh, to the Supreme Court. And then our final question for you is, um, does your program work with local employers to offer internships and job placement assistance? And it, this is a two part question. And do you happen to know the placement rate for people graduating from the insurance program? Um, I can answer the first one. I'll have to defer the second one um, to the career placement folks. Um, the first one is yes, as a part of the program, the last thing you do is an internship um, as a part of the curriculum. So you have to do an internship to graduate. So we do partner with um, the insurance companies here. There are several agent, larger agencies uh, that we partner with and, and they're kind of sit on a, a mini advisory board as we talk through um, what the curriculum should be and what we what we should be looking for in students. Greg, thank you so much for joining us today. I learned so much about insurance. I hope our audience did as well. Insurance can be so tough to navigate. So I'm really glad there's people out there like you teaching people and out there doing it yourself to help ensure the rest of us are all protected. Thank you. 
So speaking of skills, as you mentioned, um, being involved on campus can really enhance your communication and networking skills. Um, so we would like to introduce you to someone today who is, uh, I would say, a popular person on our campus just because he is very outgoing, and um, but he's also over uh, to student government and events clubs on campus with student life. So I would like to introduce you to Doug. Um, Doug, the floor is yours. Great. Thank you, Izzy. Thank you for this opportunity to, to uh, provide some information to all of you. I appreciate some of Greg's highlights on what is required to be uh, you know, ready in the workforce today, because that's what we're all about. Some of you may wonder, uh, why is student life on this career uh, type of website? Why are we talking about this? And I'll, I'll uh, use some data and research to explain why. Um, so the National Association of Colleges and Employers uh, gives us some feedback. They surveyed 200 different kinds of uh, career placements, and they said, what are you looking for in your future employees? And just like Greg said, uh, some of the results that came back probably don't surprise you. They are looking for leadership skills, uh, teamwork, team building skills, what kind of team player are you? And then of course, communication skills, just like Greg was saying, just like we've all discussed, how are your written skills and how are your uh, verbal and interpersonal communication skills? So how do we build those up? That's where student life comes in. A lot of classes uh, touch upon those and you may be able to take an excellent technical writing course or you may be able to take a public speaking course, um, but we wanna create the bridge between uh, the classroom and the workforce. So that's where student life comes in. And so we've designed a leadership program that's free to all Santa Fe College students. It's a leadership program that we offer fall and spring. So the fall is gonna be emerging leaders and we hit on your identity. We talk about your leadership skills, communication skills. Um, we take uh, inventories of your personality types, just like Greg and, and Izzy were talking about. What kind of personality, what kind of person are you and what kind of job or future career would be good for you? So we, we evaluate all of those um, and we also highly encourage internships, just like we discussed a minute ago. Internships are an excellent way for you to not only test out waters on what kind of career path you want to take, but it's also an excellent way for you to get experience and get your uh, foot in the door for any kind of job that you want in the future. So we highly recommend that. But check out our leadership programs on our Santa, Santa Fe College Student Life website too. Uh, another way like Izzy mentioned, that uh, I love to get involved with students are we have 50, more than 50 student organizations. Um, we have them from all different kinds of missions. Um, they can be social, they can be cultural, they can be political, they can be all of the above. Uh, but those are excellent ways for you to get in and serve as leaders on campus and practice your leadership skills. That's the way you can do it for free. You get advisement from great professors and great mentors. Um, sometime connecting you to other um, job opportunities or internships in the field. Um, but again, you get to, to free of charge, test out your leadership skills. How do you network? How do you build your communication skills? How do you develop your resume? Um, and how, how do you um, work on a team? Because most every job where you're going, you're gonna have to work on a team and you have to be a team player. So we, we definitely wanted to, to uh, work on those with you. And then of course, uh, just like it was mentioned, I'm the Associate Director of Student Life and Student Government Advisor. So any of you are welcome to join Student Government Senate to again, learn how to raise your voice, learn how to represent others, learn how to be a leader on campus and in our student government. But we have a lot of opportunities for leadership development in student government as well. Uh, another opportunity that we have uh, is volunteer services. So Sarah Blanc is over the Civic Engagement and Service Office. And just like it sounds, you get to get in and do some fantastic volunteer opportunities. Again, check out the kind of agencies that we have, the opportunities and the internships, because that internship or that uh, opportunity may uh, develop into some kind of job or, or pursuit that you want for your career. So it doesn't hurt for your resume, but it also really is a great experience builder for your, for your whole career development. So I will uh, kind of wrap that up just for a minute and I'll 
give it over to James or Izzy to see if there's any questions or comments on student life or anything else that you would like to know about the campus. Doug, we have lots of questions. It's hard to choose from them, but I think I've got one that I'd love to pose. <laughs> Classes started Monday, I know that. And even as a Santa Fe employee, I haven't been back to campus. Can you tell everyone what the environment looks like right now online for campus classes? Right, so James, I was there for the welcome stations on Monday. I know, I know Miguel and some other friends were too. You know, campus is about 25% full. They have very strategically um, designed the classes so that we can socially distance properly. They've made some of the larger rooms into uh, classrooms. They converted them into classrooms. Um, there is a little bit of energy and there is a little bit of campus activity with students buying books at the bookstore. Um, Subway is open uh, for the food court and everybody had on masks. I, I, will, I will tell you, students, faculty and staff, everybody had on their masks and everybody was being uh, very respectful of each other's spaces uh, because everybody has their own comfort level in this uh, COVID pandemic that we're living through. But the campus is, it's a little different, but it's still, it's still okay. It's still, it's still there and we are still open. Check out the virtual lobbies. The virtual lobbies are the way to go for appointments for anything from advising to student life, uh, to checking out your financial aid. A lot of the, the lobbies are now virtual, so you can set up an appointment. You can do a Zoom time with uh, the advisor of your choice or, or whoever you're trying to contact, uh, but definitely check that, check that out. And we're also doing our student IDs online. So you don't even have to come to campus. I always say you can skip the line and save time, but you don't have to come to campus even to get your student ID. You can make it uh, virtually as well. So we do have another question for you, and that is, you probably heard this question often uh, recently, how are student organizations and clubs being managed at this time? And then also, how do you suggest students meet each other and make friends? Great, thank you, Izzy. Yes, so student clubs and organizations, we are transitioning to the virtual reality that we're all living in right now. Uh, so we will be asking the advisors and the clubs to do Zoom meetings. Um, we're not holding any on-campus in-person meetings at this time for the fall semester just for safety, uh, but everybody will be on Zoom or if they choose to do some other kind of uh, social media platform to communicate, then that's great. A lot of people have um, group chats going, Instagram, um, but all the clubs are going to be meeting virtually. We will be having a club rush. For people to find the clubs of their choice, we'll be holding three different club rushes in mid-September uh, so that people can find people on Zoom. So we'll have the clubs lined up and be able to connect people as well. Um, another way is through the virtual lobby. The students can come in and they can ask for a request. Hey, I want to know about the PTK um, Honor Society Club. Hey, I want to know about the Society for Nerds. Or, you know, can you tell me more about engineering? And those emails will come to me and then I can filter them to the appropriate advisor or uh, club president to, to get them connected. So yes, but like you said, Izzy, the students, what we hear time and time again, they still want social community. Even if it's online, even if it's seeing each other faces, it's like the return to school vibe. They still wanna be able to say, hey, you know, I haven't seen you all summer. I haven't seen you in forever. I haven't seen you since March 12th when we all walked off campus. Uh, it's, it's amazing, but they all want to reconnect and, and still continue to build community online, which is what it's all about. I mean, that's, that's what we're here for is, is to build community and, and build relationships. Doug, last question for me. We all need help once in a while. And the added stress of COVID combined with beginning or even returning to school can be really, really difficult and oftentimes overwhelming. Are services, counseling type services available to talk with students and help people work through this difficult time? Absolutely, yes, thank you, James. So yes, our counseling center is open. Uh, they, they are doing Zoom appointments. Um, I believe you can also check out their virtual lobby as well to set up any other kind of appointment. Uh, so that is definitely available. We also have some emergency grant funding that is available. So students definitely want to check that out on the website. We've been trying to place those links out far and wide. But if you have been hit by life circumstances due to COVID or other circumstances, whether it's an apartment or loss of job or losing your, your transportation, uh, we do have some emergency links that can be found online. So please check those out. 
and, uh, and we'll be happy to help out our students in any way we can. Doug, thank you so much for joining us today. You and your team do an incredible job here on campus. Okay. Even when the college is closed, you still manage to that community, as you mentioned. Um, so thank you once again for being here today. Great. Thank you, Izzy. Thanks, James. Thanks, Doug. Great information. So, so go ahead. What if you're not a Santa Fe student? Can you still join the Santa Fe family? The answer is yes. Here to talk about how you can apply and work for Santa Fe is Heather Morgan from our Human Resources Department. Welcome, Heather. The floor is yours. Good morning, James. And good morning, everybody else. Um, so I wanted to share my screen really quickly. Um, I just want to show everybody how you can access our jobs and where you find them or where you can go on our site to find them. Um, just give me one quick second. In this day and age, you have like 10 windows open, 10 different windows. Share my screen. All right, so from the main Santa Fe webpage, if you scroll, and I've kind of, I've expressed my um, concern, I would really love for our, you know, to our employment tab to be at the top of the screen, but it's not, it's all the way at the bottom. Um, because I think it's really important, you know, yes, our students are our main focus, but, you know, we need teachers to teach these um, students. So anyway, that's my little rant about that. Um, but it, the employment tab is right here at the bottom. So to find our jobs, you'll click employment. And then we have a little message, you know, because as COVID, you know, started to unravel, you know, the, the, our search processes have closed or slowed down, should I say, but they have not stopped. Um, our committees and, you know, hiring authorities have all learned to complete the entire search via Zoom, you know, so like they're actually not even meeting and maybe some departments haven't even really met their, the candidate that they have hired in person yet. Um, they've just, they've came on board, um, done everything virtually and they've been working from home. So um, it's been, it's been interesting. However, um, so here's the web portal. Oops, sorry, hold on a minute. My daughter's home. I'm sorry, I have a dual enroll student that's at Santa Fe College that just <laughs> came through the front door at home and wants to know what to do with the trash bag. Sorry. Um, but from our main, the webpage, so we have all types of, of jobs. You know, we have the full-time positions, we have part-time positions. Um, so when you're here, you can search by the category. So just say, you know, if you're looking for an adjunct position, I mean, you would just click adjunct, which, and we have many, and those are always open. Um, they're, they're forever filling those like continually. So they're usually always open. Um, and so when you hit, you, know, you choose whichever type you're looking for, it will bring up, you know, and sort the, the search results by those jobs. Um, and just one thing to remember also that you will have to create an applicant profile. But once you do that, that very first time, you know, you enter all your, your information and you upload, you can upload, you know, your resume, those documents will be there for you to always grab each time you want to apply for a different job. So you don't have to, you know, really always enter the information over and over. Usually it's pre-filled for you. Um, you can edit as you go. And you know, if you wanna edit a different resume or cover letter for a different job, you can do that. But in that job portal, it's you kind of have like a little a document bank that you can always grab from. Um, right now, let's see, I believe we only have four full-time positions that are available. Um, let me see, I believe they're all career service. Yeah. Um, but right now we are looking for quite a few positions in facilities. Um, and I also do know like our contact center representative, we're looking for a, a full-time position and a position via Temp Force. Um, so, um, I mean, those are positions that we really need to fill because they are so important, especially in facilities with, with what's going on in COVID right now. 
Um, we really, really need these people. So it's kind of where I just wanted to show you about these positions, but you know, if you click on it, you know, it's going to show you the salary. Um, and right when you get to that very bottom, you'll hit apply. And then that's what takes you, you know, to log into your applicant profile and, you know, put in all your documents. But something that I really, um, I really want to stress about our positions that are you know, they're full time. They are part of a cert your, there's a search committee that's associated with them. So it's not like, you know, you apply and then you call the, you know, the hiring authority and be like, you know, Hey, I, I put my resume in, you know, are you hiring? And are you, and usually, you know, in, in a normal world um, outside of the education right now, you can, you know, they'll call you in for an interview next week. Well, since Santa Fe, our full-time positions have search committees from the time the position closes. So we advertise for a two week minimum from the time the position closes until a hire is made. It's usually about six weeks um, because it, you know, this, it's, you have all these different committee members on there, you know, everybody different schedules. And so, you know, that does take time, but that's the one thing that, you know, we don't really want people to get discouraged, but it does, you know, it does take some time. So, um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, part-time positions, totally different. Um, part-time kind of works like how the, the, the other part of the world um, normally works. You can put in your application. You can actually call the hiring department or the contact information that's usually on that job portal. And um, you can actually ask them directly, like, hey, I put in my application. Are you hiring? Full-time positions, no. Um, it's basic, It's very confidential. We, all we can tell you is that the process, you know, search is in process. Um, but part-time positions are totally different than adjunct. Um, you can call at any time because all HR basically does is just collect the applications for the departments and they review and they hire, you know, at their leisure. So. Awesome. Heather, I have a question for you. Yes. Any advice, if you could tell our viewers anything at all about how to best apply and to work at Santa Fe College, what advice would you offer up? How to best apply? <laughs> um, I really feel like that cover letter, um, or the cover letter can really tell a lot about you. Yes, you know, your resume, your education, everything that you have there, you know, that matters too. But I feel like the cover letter is what really allows you to, you know, put your personal spin and really tell a committee who you are. Um, because when they're reviewing applications, they're going to say, or they're going to look, okay, does this person meet the minimum qualifications? Meaning, do they have that basic degree that it's saying that the, you know, the job needs? And do they have the, just say two years experience? But beyond that, that's when the, you know, the committees really start looking at, you know, who is this person, um, you know, when they want to invite you. So I would really say your cover letter is really important. Um, so yeah. I love that answer. Uh, one of the things that I teach with resumes and cover letters is just how valuable a cover letter can be because work culture is so important and it's not just the skills you have. It's knowing that you're going to be a good fit for the environment that you're going into. So, so thank you. Great answer. I absolutely love that. <laughs> well, you know, too, and it's, make, it's, you know, it's the world that we're in now and, you know, that diverse diversity, you know what I mean? It's like, and it's not just, you know, our skin color or because we're male, female, it's almost like, you know, those, those special unique qualities that are about you that you can bring, you know, that's, it's important. It's really important. So. Heather, we have one more question for you. And um, what kind of benefits come with working with Santa Fe College? So our benefits, um, we have a very, I can't remember who said this word, but robust <laughs> benefits package. I don't know where I've heard that word, but I've heard it from somebody at Santa Fe. Um, but our the main right off the bat, um, so if you are a full-time employee, um, like the insurance, I mean, we employee only, are, we pay, the college pays 100% of your insurance premium. So, you know, none of that comes out of your paycheck. However, you know, if you're adding a family, you know, or spouse, you know, our the premiums are a little up there, um, but you know, they are everywhere. So, but that's one of the really main benefits is our insurance. Um, we also, awful, also offer um, Santa Fe tuition waivers to our employees 
and they're, you know, they're beneficiaries. So, you know, kids and your spouse um, to Santa Fe. And then also we do have a, um, a relationship with UF to where it's, it's not, you know, you're not automatically awarded U, UF tuition waivers, but it's more of like um, a pool. Um, and so they, and they first give it to like the employees and then work their way, you know, if there is monies left over, they can give it to um, children and then you know, spouses and things like that. But that's important. And those are, that's a really big deal. Um, like my daughter right now, she's dual enrollment. She's in her second year of college and she's a senior in high school. Um, but when she gets out, it's like, I mean, it's such a good feeling, you know, to know that be taken care of. Um, but then also is our, our employee paid leave. So we have, it's, I believe it's like 20 plus days um, of just our, you know, the vacation and just leave and vacation days. That's, so you have 20 days. Spring is what spring break is like a week that we get and it's paid for um, two weeks in Christmas. So I think UF, I think they give you off until the 24th or 25th and then you can take your personal leave for that extra week. But I believe Santa, I mean, Santa Fe worked two weeks. So it's like you get three weeks, like right off the bat and, you know, the other paid holidays. But then you also accrue eight hours if you've been there for, you know, after five years, it's like 10 hours, but eight hours of sick and leave, um, sick and vacation. So it's like the va the days off that you are, you know, that you accrue is, it's great. It's really great. So. Yeah, they're talking about benefits. I have to agree. They are absolutely amazing. But there are two benefits that you didn't mention that I want to. First off, the people at Santa Fe, they are absolutely amazing and some of the most supportive people I've ever worked with. Absolutely phenomenal. And secondly, the campus. Just walk around the campus one time and you will be in awe at the beauty of the grounds. It is absolutely stunning. There's so much value in that. So again, thank you. Yeah, you know, I do want to say something. Um, so Greg, your, your last name, like I have kind of a little bit of an elephant memory. Um, I kept on seeing Bradley, Bradley, Bradley. Like where have I seen that name? Is your is your dad Winston? Yes. Okay. So before I worked in HR, I actually used to work for the foundation. Um, I used to work for Chuck. He's basically one of my mentors, call him Uncle Chuck. Um, but he actually brought me to Santa Fe. So I was, your name, and it's like, is that his? So, so you're his son? Yes. Okay. All right. Yes. Yeah. And now I, so you're part of the foundation now, right, as well? I am. Okay, so it's, yes. that, that's what's neat about Santa Fe. It's like that family, you know, it's just how we are all so connected and like Gainesville and it's just such a small little world. So I just wanted to point that out because I just, your name was like speaking in my head. So, yes, thank you so much for joining us, Heather, and letting us know how to apply for Santa Fe um, and continuing about speaking about jobs. Uh, we're moving on to James' favorite part. Yes, it is, is. I get to connect people in the community and be a resource for students. I'd like to introduce Katie Clemen from the Collier Company, who manages residential living in the Gainesville area and in various places throughout the nation. They are looking for great people to join their team. Katie, welcome. The floor is yours. Thank you so much for having me. Um, it's great to be here. Um, I'm Katie Clemen. I joined the Collier Company is about four weeks ago. Um, as the talent acquisition and retention specialist. We have a really great team. Our home office is located here in Gainesville. Um, and just to give you a little bit of a backstory of the Collier Companies, um, our founder and chairman, Nathan S. Collier, started this adventure back in 1972 and he purchased a duplex here in Gainesville. So we really are a Gainesville-based company. And um, even though years later, we have grown to have apartment homes in Florida, in Georgia, in Norman, Oklahoma. So we have about 50 communities and that's growing. Um, and within those communities, we total to over 11,000 apartment homes. 50% uh, of those homes, about 50% are student living and about 50% are multifamily. 
Um, so within the Collier companies, we have this really big initiative um, and it's an exciting initiative to double the size of our um, company over the next decade, which a lot of people will go, whoa, wait a second, we're in the middle of a pandemic. <laughs> How do you plan on doing this? Um, so we have a couple initiatives uh, put in place. One of them is that we look at the trends of what's going on. And Florida is very, very, very quickly becoming the number one destination in the country where people want to move to. I mean, they want the sandy beaches and the warm weather. They don't want the snow on the roof coming in through the chimney, right? So everyone's moving to Florida. Um, and so that is really making it the state to invest in. So. And just an example of us growing earlier this year, actually back in March, we broke ground um, in Port Orange. And that community is going to be home of 310 apartment homes. And it's just going to be absolutely beautiful. Um, the Collier Companies takes amazing pride in our communities and in our residents and making sure that they're um, their home is the heart of our business. We want to welcome you home. So we take a lot of pride in that. Um, a lot of our growth, I should say all of our growth, is self-funded, meaning we're able to um, watch the trends, as I mentioned, but then we purchase the land, we build new, we maximize that brand new, beautiful community to full capacity. Um, or occupancy, and then we hold it and we manage it. Our entire team, we have an entire site team, a community team with regional managers and community managers, um, all the way down to leasing specialists so that we're not, our residents aren't having to go, oh, who do I write this check out to this month because it's been sold again and again. Um, like a lot of other companies, we take pride in all of our um, ways to make sure that our residents are uh, connected with the Collier companies and we hold our properties, which is really kind of nice. Um, and then, you know, mentioning that we have each community has a team, I should say. We are always looking for that amazing talent to join us. Um, we're looking for people that are energetic and they're willing to learn. Um, our founder and chairman, Nathan Collier, he is a teacher at the University of Florida, and he very much strives and pushes us to continuously learn with self-development and reading books and making sure that we're aware of the trends that are around us, and which is really, really great because it gets your mind thinking outside of the box. It's, it's, it's phenomenal. Um, right now, if you go to our website, which is callyourcompanies.com, we have about 30 openings across all of our communities, which I had mentioned are Florida, Georgia, and Oklahoma, um, ranging from leasing specialists and service techs all the way up to management. And um, when we're looking at resumes, like I'll echo what Heather said, um, the cover letter is Big. That's where you put your uh, personality into it and you really try and capture us, the audience, um, on who you are. So I really put emphasis on that as well. But we are looking for talent that is willing to join our team and that are willing to just shatter ceilings with growing uh, personally and professionally. Um, I'll mention a few of our benefits. Um, we have Two really great benefits outside of the medical dental vision that I want to mention. Um, the Collier Companies does a 100% 401k match up to 10% of your salary over time. So once you're here for a couple of years, 100% of what you put into your 401k is matched. I've never heard of that before. D definitely. Um, was a surprise when I when I was recruited to hear that because I was like, wow, 100% of what I put in, you're going to put in too? Sold. Retirement, here we come. <laughs> so, um, and the second one is 
um, our employees are given a, for the medical, if you enroll with our medical benefits, a prepaid um, debit card to cover any medical expenses that are not covered under the medical insurance. Now that's not coming out of your paycheck every pay period. That is offered by um, the Collier companies itself. It is not coming from your paycheck. It's just a benefit that they give you to help um, offset some of the medical costs that are not covered by medical insurance or general insurance and stuff. So that with two kids, <laughs> I was really excited to hear that as well um, because kids, you know, they're reckless. They break bones and they have to, <laughs> they have to get fixed. So um, when you're not, if you're not able to get it, then you have this opportunity to, to use the card. So it's a pretty sweet benefit. If you ask me, um, I mentioned our website, which is the calliercompanies.com, calliercompanies.com. And on there, you can see all of our communities and, um, Four plans. You can see all of our career opportunities that we have open, um, and then you have contact information to get a hold of me if needed. Katie, we do have one question for you, and that is, you know, Collier has been in Gainesville for quite a while, as you mentioned. Can you share with us a little bit about how COVID nineteen has changed the way that you do business during these challenging times? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I mentioned that I had just joined the team not too long ago, but um, when in March, the entire home office, which is located downtown, worked from home until um, we were given the green light to come back to the office. And within the office, we encourage masks wearing, we encourage distancing, and we have hand sanitizing stations located. Um, we all are thankfully in this setup that we have here, have an office and we're able to keep our door closed with whatever your comfort level is. You know, um, our guests stand outside of our doors if needed, you know, to have a conversation. So, and we're really just trying to encourage um, our guests that visit the home office to do the same. Um, within the community specifically, um, our residents, you know, they are the heart of our business. So we want to make sure that their safety is the number one priority. Social distancing, uh, hand sanitizing stations, mask wearing requirements when they visit a clubhouse or visit the leasing office. Um, we encourage them to make phone calls up to the leasing office instead of physically coming up if they have an issue. Um, so we're really trying to encourage all of the protocols that are in place. Thank you, Katie. Um, if this sounds like something that you would like to do, please reach out to Katie. Her information is in the description box as well. So definitely Thanks, go ahead and talk to her. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Katie. Thanks. Earlier in the show, Sally from the Institute of Public Safety had a technical glitch and she had a, a presentation and she was not able to share it. Sally, we've got a couple minutes left. If you'd like to go ahead and do that, if you're not having any problems, please go ahead and do so. Thank you, James. Can you all see the screen? Yes. Okay, so this is a presentation. Here we go. Welcome to the Institute of Public Safety, Santa Fe College. What we do here, we have two associate's degree program, emergency medical services, criminal justice tech. We have a training program, as I said earlier, emergency medical tech, the Medic, Police Academy, and Correction Officer Academy. What we do in emergency medical service program, this is a one semester long program. And by you completing the EMT and paramedic, you can also earn associate's degree as well. EMT training is four months, one semester. Paramedic program is three semester. Once you complete this two EMT and paramedic program, you only have 19 additional hours of general coursework. So you get a hands-on program, you get EMT certificate, paramedic certificate. At the same time, you have a chance to earn two-year associate degree. That's a wonderful way to go. The careers in EMS, we have fire departments, ambulance companies, hospitals, 
theme parks, federal government, and security companies. Like I said earlier, we have partnership with the GFR and SEFR, and we have a job fair at the end of the academy. Let's go to the criminal justice and law enforcement programs. We have associate science degree in criminal justice program. As for law enforcement academy, it is five and a half months, almost six months training program. We offer three police academy. We learn about law, firearms, physical fitness, defensive tactics, arrest techniques, crime scene investigation, emergency response driving, interview techniques. As for degree, you learn about criminal justice technology. You learn about police, courts, corrections, patrol technique, criminal investigation, crime scene processing, law and evidence general coursework. Let me make it very clear, you can earn this two-year program by just going to the main campus and take it all online right now, or Northwest campus. Or you can also come to the Police Academy and up to 24 credit. We have this system called Bridge Program. Once you complete the Police Academy, you have an opportunity to earn up to 24 college credits. The job after the criminal justice law enforcement careers, once you complete the police academy, of course you can be a Florida certified police officer working for GPD, ASO, Santa Fe PD, UFPD, and other county police officers. You can be sheriff's deputy, detective, correctional officer, FWC. A lot of boys likes to go to the FWC. Crime scene investigator, probation patrol officer, police dispatcher, car officer, private investigator. There's a lots of different jobs. Some, you know, many applicants, once they finish working for local agency, they become FBI. They go to Secret Service. They go to those big people. Federal agent, federal air marshal, deputy U.S. marshal, border patrol. There are lots and lots of careers that you can go. This is our facility. We open a world-class facility. It's a state of the art. You all should come and check it out. This is what the actual training place looks like. On the left-hand side is a restaurant and a bar. And the right-hand side, we have a classroom, a lab. That's where you get your hands-on training. This is just a picture of how we do that training. You can see the car accidents and ambulances on the back. So we use the real cars and ambulance and police cars to do that training. We have a local agency come and train our students. And this is what James was asking me earlier. This is the inside of the townhouse look like. Downstairs, we have a kitchen and living room. Upstairs, we have bedrooms. And this is our restaurant and bar. And we actually hold the parties here too. Some of the main campus people will come and hold the parties as well. This is where instructors see how students move throughout the building when they get the training. We can make all kinds of sounds, explosion, video image, smoke, smells. It's a lot of fun things to do. This could be you. Now I give it back to Iz and James. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity. Thank you, Sally. Thank you for sharing your presentation. Um, so today we mentioned about a lot of resources, um, but as we said earlier, the links and also emails are located in the description box of the YouTube. So go out there and look at that. Um, but we would love to continue to hear back from you. So if you have any ideas of topics you would like us to uh, talk about, please let us know. We are down to the wire. For our next show, we're hoping to change things up a bit. I want to invite all of the employers registered on the Santa Fe Student Job Board to come and join us and do a show just heavy with employers, with opportunities for work, and just to help us learn a little bit more about the companies. So next show is going to be in 14 days from today. Don't, don't miss it. So unfortunately, we're out of 
the time, but join us soon. Um, and as we continue to weather the storm, we do want you all to know that we're here for you. If you have any questions, let us know. Uh, James, he can help and provide some uh, resources for you. But uh, in the meantime, take care, good luck, and stay safe.